It is the DJT01 Black Mamba third party version of Tarn. Yes, this is a very cool with die cast parts version of a very recent figure that came out in Legacy known as Tarn. And I am going to go through him bit by bit. He's called Black Mamba. I don't know why. Nothing on the package says Black Mamba, but we'll go with that. And we'll see if this is something that you want to get for your collection. Be right back. So as you can see, Sky has decided that all the love that she's been shown by the majority of my viewers makes her want to actually be on camera more. So it is a cool box, nice artwork of Black Mamba, AKA Tarn. And he comes in this plastic prison, woohoo, with all his accessories. Comes with instructions, of course, and he comes with a sword. Now this sword is not something that came with the Hasbro version of Tarn, but it did come with the Bludgeon character. So why not? Having a sword's not a bad thing. You can scratch Sky with it. All right, we're gonna put this over here because Sky sometimes likes to play with things. So we'll take this out and take out Tarn, AKA Black Mamba. And there he is. Now he's got the guns, the sword, and on the back here, which is removable, he's got the little post that you can use to basically attach the guns and put them on his arm, thusly. And what's really cool about his guns here is they have built-in lights. If I press this button, you can see there's a light there. Press the button there. So not for you, but it's very cool that he has those additional lights in his weapons. It's a neat gimmick. Is it necessary? No. And they're not really strong enough to be like laser pointers or else Sky would be trying to catch them right now. Probably good because, you know, otherwise, ah, you could burn your eyes out. But I'm going to turn those off for the moment. Now, he's a very cool figure. I'm going to put him on the turntable of doom. Let's talk about his look. And obviously, he looks a lot like the Tarn that came out from Hasbro, but he's a little shinier. You can see him from every angle now. He is a third party, but he does have a Decepticon symbol on him because it's on his face. You can't, can't make Tarn without having a Decepticon symbol on his face. But... Very cool, and die cast pieces. These legs, die cast. This might be plastic, the feet are definitely die cast. It's kind of hard to tell, he's very heavy. He's actually pretty weighty. And this chest piece, die cast. This piece here, die cast. So very nice die cast pieces. So he's a substantial figure. Speaking of substantial, from head to toe, he is nine inches tall. Yes, that is impressive. Now he can also hold the sword, which makes him even more intimidating of a figure. So I'm gonna go through the posability and then we're gonna put him next to the Hasbro one. Yes, the Hasbro one. And you can do a little size comparison and deco comparison there. So starting with the feet, he does have ankle swivels. It's not a huge ton of movement, but you can put him in a wide stance and put his feet flat on the ground. You can even go further because he's got pretty wide feet. So if you don't care that they're not quite flush to the ground, you can really put them in a wide stance. Of course, you realize I need to do this. Let's see about a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. And he is so close. I mean, he can do the split, but as you can see, the legs don't go 100% off to the sides. I can feel some resistance there, so I'm not gonna mess with it anymore than that. But yes, he can do a nice, almost Jean-Claude Van Damme. And he can kick forward somewhat. Like, okay, he got caught for a second there on a piece, but he can kick very high. And even with his knees here, if you push it, he's slightly double jointed. So quite high. I think I'm gonna take the weapons off just to make it uh, a little easier to see. But yes, kicks quite high. In the back, there's a bit of rubbing here, so it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to really do back kicks. I'm not wanting to try to force it past that, but he can definitely do a good side kick, and you can really make it high by, you know, using the angles in both his legs. Bends at the knee, and just like the uh, Marvel one, it's actually kind of a double jointed knee. This is how it should be, and this can really cause some damage when he needs somebody. But there's like an extra joint in there, so his knee can even go a little further forward. So someone trying to step out of the way might still get hit. It should snap in there and you're not supposed to do that, but what the hell. Swiveling, very tight joints on this, I'll have to say. It swivels around, almost all the way around. 
So good posability there. The waist, he does twist at the waist, though he's got this piece in the back that kind of keeps it from going all the way around. But do you really want it to go all the way around? That's a good amount of movement on the waist. Now his arms, he can go all the way around with his arms. Little tight joints again there. Bend at the elbow, he can swivel all the way around. You can also bring the arms up. So he's like, yeah. I'm Hulk Hogan, and I'm gonna mess you up, man. No, you're not Hulk Hogan. You're deluded. I don't think there's any like type of ab crunch or anything like that, but the head does turn all the way around very nicely. And yeah, very good posability overall. Now the hands, and I'm not gonna mess this up in this uh, fake tarn one, the uh, fingers do open up and you can twist the wrists all the way around, but that gives you the ability to, you know, pose his hands a little bit more. And if you open it up and put the sword in, even with the fingers open, he can hold the sword. It doesn't come out very easily. I mean, by accident, you can certainly remove it easily enough. And of course, on his back, he's got these guns that can be moved, but it's nice that they're up here in his robot mode. So a very poseable figure, I like it. Now, just to show a little scaling, who do we have here but the Hasbro Tarn? So you can see there's quite a size difference. This is, I would say, approaching like masterpiece scale. I mean, I think some of the other Decepticon masterpieces are larger, but with like an MP10 Optimus, he would be good. And some of the uh, Autobot masterpieces, but he's definitely oversized and much heavier than this guy. Now the Deco, it is a little bit different, which is not a shock. You can see that the purple is lighter and more metallic on the Black Mamba version. You can see that the plastic is shinier on the guns in the back. Pretty much all the purple is lighter and shinier. Otherwise it looks like the same mold, just upscaled. The gold pieces are shinier on the Black Mamba. This is a really well done, I'm not sure if I would call it third party or counterfeit or a bootleg. I mean, he is an oversized version of Tarn and it looks like the transformation is exactly the same, just the accessories are a little bit more, well, the accessories have electronics in them, which these do not. These just have light piping. Though when you turn on the laser, it does not really light up the uh, sides. So that's something to be said for the light piping because if you get a light into there, it will make some of the other areas glow as long as you, you know, don't drop it off his arm like I just did. But yeah, overall a bigger figure, shinier. I like the deco. The black seems a little blacker. This might be more really dark gray, but yeah, very cool upsized version of Tarn. All right, let's put him into his vehicle mode, which the transformation is pretty much I said exactly the same. Now one thing, and I actually saw another reviewer say this, don't grab from the tips when you're moving these around, grab from near the base, that way they're less likely to break. And one thing I'll also say about its transformation, you have to pull the shoulders out, it takes a little bit of force. So just be aware of that when you're transforming him, it does take a bit of force. I don't think you're gonna break him. He seems a very sturdy toy otherwise. Oh, and you can pull his face off, whoopsie. Now one thing ca that can happen is these pieces can come off of his shoulders, his arms, and they pop back easy enough, provided you get the right angle on it. So there is Black Mamba as a tank with his light up guns, woohoo. And basically he has quite a bit of armament. These can move. Now somebody did note that you could always take this particular gun here. And if you move these forward before you plug them in, he can actually aim a bit higher. You have these here. You can fold them down if you want, or you can leave them pointed. Kind of makes it more dangerous looking if they're pointed. Though there's probably a uh, vent shaft in there. One torpedo could destroy the whole battle station. Okay, well, this isn't Star Wars. Now, this sword, you could, for weapon storage, attach it here if you want. Eh, nah. There's a number of places that you can plug it in. Over here's pretty good. You can plug it into these uh, holes here, and then it's just weapon storage. You can bring these out, and you can fire in different directions. A very nice looking tank. Now, on the bottom, he does have these little wheel indentations, but uh, he actually doesn't roll, so you can slide him across a... Uh, Smooth surface, but no rolling. So no true roll test, but a very cool tank. Now from nose to back, he's almost eight inches. If you count up to here, like seven and three quarters. Now you can see size wise, obviously the Black Mamba is 
larger than the Hasbro, which is only about six inches tall. And these do not bend down, these could. So there's like an extra piece for you. Again, I don't know what you like better. If you want to go with the Tarn look, keep them out. If you want to go with a slightly different look, bend them down. Really up to you, right Sky? She just likes to be here. She's not causing, are you not causing any trouble? I didn't think so. But very cool and weight wise, this is quite a bit heftier than this. And if you're trying to get a, a Tarn, I will put a link to Tarn in the description, but he may not be as cheap as he once was. I think he's Voyager, considered Voyager size. So he's like $34.99 retail. Now this guy cost me total $35.90. That includes the shipping, which was free. And I had 69 cents worth of coins, which is a weird uh, number for that. But with the tax, yeah, $35.90. This guy I think was $34.99 retail plus tax. So this guy cost me less. And he's got light up weapons, die cast metal. He's bigger, shinier. I really like this version of Tarn. So it's gonna cost you around that. I'm looking at the listing right now, because I do vary. It's at $37.63. There are coupons and discounts available, so. But even at that, that's a really good deal. And I think overall, he's a much heftier and uh, cooler version of Tarn. And I think it's fun that they added on the sword. Speaking of fun, I hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them and showing these wonderful toys, even if they are some type of, you know, counterfeit, oversized knockoff. But again, really cool. A lot of the uh, oversized knockoffs usually have some die-cast pieces. This is no exception, and he's damn cool. And of course, while you are mulling this guy over, you can actually check out a very similar mold to this, which is our bludgeon, and I compare him to a Revenge of the Fallen version of bludgeon. That's right over here. And we will see you next time. And as always, have fun and good hunting.